Caché, the eighth feature film by Austrian director Michael Haneke, has achieved several accolades and is one of the most prevalent films in academic research in the last two decades. The film focuses on the Laurent family, a Parisian couple, Georges and Anne, and their 12-year-old son, Piero. Their ordinary life is interrupted when a mysterious tape arrives, showing a continuous three-hour-long shot of their house. As the film progresses, the family receives more tapes, postcards, and anonymous phone calls, all without a clear message. Eventually, Georges realizes these curious artifacts are meant for him, as some of the subjects point towards a childhood trauma relating to his mistreatment of a fellow young boy, Majid. The plot follows many tense twists and turns, but the identity of the person creating the tapes is never revealed. Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire? This dissonant lack of resolution solidifies a bad taste in the viewer's mouth, which was introduced in the very first scene. Film scholar Kevin Sherman qualifies the immense academic response for cachet, arguing that the first shot is the most written about opening scene since Orson Welles' A Touch of Evil from 1958. Sherman also brings up the fact that Haneke's cachet is so dense and has so many notable innovations and subjects that merely addressing one aspect of the film's excellence will fail to depict an accurate picture of cachet's greatness. All right, all right, all right. That being said, the most intriguing aspect of the film is Haneke's use of perspective. This director makes a thriller all the more intense by making the audience feel as if they are the culprit, as if they are the ones threatening Georges with the tapes. When we watch Caché, we cannot help but feel like we are the ones spying on the characters. Take note of this shot, which is indeed the first of the film. We are sitting down watching the opening credits roll on some movie, studying the frame, just watching. After five minutes of just this shot, it is revealed that we are in fact indulging in a piece of film, which the characters believe is meant to terrorize them. Now watch this shot of Georges and his son Piero. Notice that it bears resemblance to the first shot, which we know was filmed by some devious, albeit unknown, intruder. As the characters walk towards us, the camera shies away, as if it or the person controlling the camera were trying not to be seen. Then Georges passes within inches of the lens without noticing the camera. At this point, we realize the camera is not part of the film's world. It is non-diegetic, but we feel like we are still part of some sinister snooping. Cachet continually plays with the idea of the diegesis of the camera. Meaning, is the camera something that the characters would never be aware of? Or is the camera a physical object in the character's world? Here, the camera starts presumably diegetic. George is filming his TV show, and the camera is part of the production for that TV show. Now the frame shifts to follow George, allowing us to view his private conversation away from the set. This begs the question, are we watching film from a TV camera filming George's TV show, or are we watching shots made up by a director of some French movie? In terms of the overall cinematography, there are five types of shots that are generally used in cachet, each implying a different level of diegesis. There are static short shots, used mostly in conversations, shot reverse shot style, regularly used in any ordinary film. The head-on perspective shot. The viewer is looking through the eyes of a character, but this is almost always meant to be non-diegetic. This is also used in many other films. There is the highly dynamic following shot. This is used in many films to make the audience feel as if they are walking along with the action of the story. The dynamic shot 
in which the camera casually follows the character's movement. Maybe the most used shot in Cache, the frame follows the characters as if the viewer were sitting unseen in the room, following the characters with their eyes. The effect is similar to the highly dynamic following shot, but creates a darker feeling. Finally, the stagnant long shot. Most of the tapes sent are of this nature. The viewer soon associates this type of shot with a diegetic camera, but it is frequently used for exposition or establishing shots as well. Cache uses all of these cinematic styles in tandem in order to confuse the viewer as to the true diegesis of what they are watching. The result turns the idea of film reflexivity on its head. Instead of pointing the camera at the audience, making them realize they are watching a movie, Cache makes the viewer point the camera at the tortured characters. The mood is all that much more sinister because we know the characters do not want someone watching them. Then how does this use of perspective make Cache such a great thriller? Especially when there is only one scene of violence or action. When other great filmmakers establish tension or create thrills, they often bring you into the story, making you feel the terror that the characters are also feeling. Haneke brings us into the story's world, but makes the person watching the source of the fear. Thank you for watching. My name is Zach McMaster, and this has been a video essay studying the use of perspective in Michael Haneke's 2005 film, Cachet.